yeah um hi good morning everyone uh, thanks for uh, joining today good afternoon everyone good morning good evening everyone from wherever you're joining in um here is another session with uh it took an earlier session today uh, where we talked about how to create um, personalized chat boots using Motic, and we are taking another session now on how to um, create a um, Motic plugin development using integration framework. Did I get that right? Okay, yeah, so yeah, um, you got it right. <laughs> a brief, a brief introduction to. Um, so that we know who Patrick Amohit is. Patrick is the director of consulting services and affair services at Adlerance, where he helps accelerate digital outcomes for customers that deliver great digital experiences utilizing open source technologies. Patrick works with organizations, startup brands, and agencies to distill product requirements and define product roadmap using their strategic goals. He's also a software developer with over a decade of experience in development, testing, and product management across a wide variety of businesses and uh, process domains. Um, so welcome, Patrick. And uh, the next speaker we have uh, is Mohit. Mohit is uh, working as a technical architect at Azurent. He's also an open source enthusiast and he'll be working with Drupal on Motic and other PHP frameworks. Uh, he's also a very active contributor to various open source projects such as Drupal and Motic. He's also a frequent speaker at Drupal conferences and events across the globe. And apart from PHP and the uh, uh, ecosystem, he also tries to play around and explore new technologies such as GraphQL and other exciting JS frameworks. So we welcome Mohit. Um, welcome. And uh, they'll be taking us on how to well, give me a second. Yeah. Okay, so they're taking us on how to use multi plugin development using integration frameworks. Um, all right, so I'll leave the stage for Mohita and Patrick to take over. All right, let me share the slide. All right. Uh, oh, thank you very much. Um, thank you very much. Okay. Um, so we'll just get started. Um, so in this session, um, we're going to talk about developing modding plugins. We are going to deep dive into it, uh, see the code, and uh, we'll do it with a with an example. I mean, Mohit is going to walk us through that. And we are going to specifically talk about <coughs> integration framework uh, that Motic provides uh, in, in detail. Um, so moving on. Um, uh, this is a quick, uh, uh, again, favor already introduced us, but then uh, I'm director of consulting and acquisition services at Excellent, and Mohit is the technical architect. These are our contact information in case you want to reach out or you need to have more questions in this session or post this session, right? We would be happy to connect with you. Um, so, uh, before we start and deep dive into writing these plugins, let's understand what are Motic plugins and why do we need these plugins. So uh, Motic comes with built-in plugins to integrate with things like HubSpot, Salesforce, Instagram, LinkedIn, Gmail, and others. Um, these plugins synchronize the data to Motic or from Motic to these systems or to these other external platforms. Uh, Motic plugins are installable packages which can extend Motic functionality or integrate with the any other system. Uh, and why do we need these plugins? Uh, Motic cores already comes and with the uh, more or less all the necessary functionality that works in most scenarios. But then at the same time, it's at times limited uh, in terms of its connectivity uh, to the other external system. And therefore we develop plugins to extend and integrate with this any other system and then uh, do an entire end-to-end -end marketing automation. Uh, plugin, these plugins support makes a system more extensible and powerful uh, just because it allows us to do all of these integrations and share the data in and out from Motic. Uh, 
moving on so quickly introducing uh, uh, something about integration framework within motic um, we are going to talk about that like i said in detail um, uh, typically uh, i mean there are few uh, tools and automation suits like zapier that provides a support for integrating with any other uh, system and uh, but at the same time we can get some lead data into motic from these other system but they are limited they are, the data itself is not uh, sufficient at times or the structure or the storing of the data is not sufficient uh, or would typically will not be enough for your custom use case and every system and every marketing uh, automation setup of your motic would be custom so um, we we needed uh, to build some additional features like providing filters, point systems to leverage that data and to leverage all of this data and analyze them, we, we need to build these plugins using this integration framework. And uh, Motic 3.x uh, provides the integration model which defines these rule sets to add different custom plugins to which, sub, which in turn supports these uh, additional uh, integrations. Uh, so overall, this is the high level process or how uh, how integration framework works or how it kind of uh, uh, is needs to be developed. First thing is about a definition, configuration and features where uh, we provide configuration forms to like, add like keys that connects with your other external system. I mean, the field mapping that needs to happen, like what data you need to sync from your system to other system and vice versa and enable these uh, various source fields from Motic to Motic for syncing. So, uh, what the first part is we will be talking about is the configuration. How do we develop those interfaces? Second, we will see uh, and talk about the authentication where how these API authentication happens with these third party system. Um, there are various kind of authentications that are supported. I mean, you can typically do an API key based authentication or a parameter based keys uh, or a basic authentication, which is not recommended, of course. Uh, but then uh, typically uh, OAuth and OAuth 1A, OAuth 2 and various other types of OAuth 2, uh, OAuth 2 lagged and OAuth 3, OAuth 3 lagged uh, authentication as well. So this integration provides, integration framework provides a way to utilize all of these authentication mechanism. And we will talk about those and see those in detail. Uh, the next step to develop or this plugin uh, or using this integration framework is data synchronization. This, this particular part or step deals with how we can store the data, how we integrate with the APIs, and to make sure there is no duplicate data. I mean, if there are any API call limits and, uh, and things like that, or you want to customize and get the data post a date range or anything of that sort. And also to store and pre-process the data that is either going out of Motic or coming into your Motic system. Um, lastly, uh, I mean, we, uh, we'll be talking about things like webhooks, event listeners, and filters. Uh, how do you kind of create these custom filter options that enables you to uh, implement filter out of the data and manage in segments, for example, or have even custom actions that let you uh, add points to the contact or your lead, and also remove points uh, based on the certain event. So you, we will be able to talk. We will be talking about certain actions, the custom actions that we have developed as part of our plugin development and how we have used that. Um, so uh, that's that's broadly how the integration framework we will be talking about. Uh, and now Mohit will kind of talk about in detail uh, how exactly and how where do you get started and how do you start how you, anybody can start building these plugins. Over to you, Mohit. Yeah. Thanks, Pratik. Uh, can you confirm, like, if you can hear me? Uh, yes, I can. Yeah, all right. Uh, thanks. So yeah, uh, thanks everyone again uh, for joining uh, today. So yeah, so like we will see uh, like the entire uh, the bundle uh, development process in uh, four step is Pratik mentioned, right? So initially we will start with like how we can, uh, you know, uh, uh, scaffold the basic bundle, like what are the basic files that are needed to, you know, create a bundle and what are the basic things. And uh, so for today, like, uh, you know, uh, for the example purpose, we are, uh, you know, we are building a plugin that gets integrated with uh, Demio webinar uh, systems. So basically, Demio is a kind of service that allows us to, you know, run online webinar systems and it provides kind of API that we can leverage to, you know, fetch uh, webinar related reportings, like how many user attended, like what kind of user left early and all sort of processing uh, or all sort of like API data that it provides. So we will be like uh, building a small integration uh, for this. So yeah, let's get started actually. So I mean, uh, uh, to create a simple, uh, uh, basically simple plugin what we need is like uh, 
we need one one uh, bundle class for the plugin so in our case it, it can be like demo bundle.php apart from that we have um, one integration class as well so integration class is something which you know it, it holds uh, the uh, relevant information related to plugin like it can be the like machine name of the plugin uh, display name of the plugin uh, other things like icon and uh, all other things Mm. Apart from that, uh, in uh, bundle class, we can specify various hooks. Like if you want to install a new schema, if you want to update something, so it has like various method. Uh, so we can actually leverage it. So and uh, the third one is uh, config file. So in um, in uh, like Motic plugins, the config file is something which you know which holds as a like reference to all the services which are present in the system. So in our case, like we need to uh, specify our service, uh, which can be used in like different other classes or different other services. So that like once we uh, specify it over here, we will be like able to easily like pass it as an argument to other classes or other services. So we need to uh, specify that file as well. So yeah, so the overall gist is like uh, have uh, uh, configured PHP inside one directory. I'll show you actually, I'll, I'll show in code. So uh, other file, other files are like demo integration dot php, demo bundle dot php. So together, like these three will, uh, you know, help us to uh, have a like basic scaffolding. So like at the end of this uh, first step, uh, what we will have is like a folder for the plugin, and we will have like the demo bundle dot php, which which is at the like root of the folder, which will have like all uh, necessary information about the bundle. And um, the second one is about a demo integration dot php. Um, this is basically the icon that we basically specify in integrations to PHP file. And this is an, again a configuration file for the integration. So I'll quickly uh, show you on the code like how it will look like. So this is our plugin. Uh, Pratik, uh, can you confirm if you can see my ID? Yes, I can. Okay, cool. So I'll just minimize everything. And uh, so initially, this is like the first uh, class that what we have a demo bundle. And it basically extends abstract plugin bundle class. So it has like various other methods as well. Like as I mentioned earlier, so we can leverage it like depending on the requirement. So the next one is. Uh, Wait, if we can zoom it a bit. Uh, sure, sure. Tell. I'll just a second. Okay. Fine. Is it visible now? Yeah, much better. Right. Yeah, I'll stick to this mic. So uh, this is like the first class that we need to build. Uh, the next one is like uh, integrations class. So here uh, we are building a basic integration. So it extends basic integration. Uh, this class is present in integrations bundle. Uh, here we have uh, like various methods, like for example, get name, get display name, even we specify the icon path over here. So it will actually render the proper icon in the interface. We have like various constants over here, but let's not worry about this for now. And the third thing that I mentioned about over here is creating a service. So in the services uh, key, basically it's an array. So in the services key, uh, we have like a separate integration key and uh, we specify our uh, like integration um, service over here like this. So that like whenever we want to use it in like uh, various other services, we can like directly use the service and uh, yeah, it will have all sort of relevant things. And uh, this service is basically tagged with like motic.integration and motic.basic underscore integration um, things. So again, I mean, it is basically the concept from Symfony that we take services and it will identify uh, based on tags. So this is basically, these are the things that are needed for you know uh, overall scaffolding of the plugin. And uh, once we have that ready, we can actually see over here on the plugin page, something like this. Initially, it will be disabled, but yeah, like once it is enabled, we can actually, the icon will be like in the uh, green color. So this is about like handling uh, basic scaffold uh, for now. Let's move to uh, next step. So now uh, once we have uh, the basic things are ready, typically the, uh, the the purpose of plugin is to, you know, it provides some feature to like uh, overall, uh, the uh, overall uh, feature, which are like, which are not part part of like Motic or any other click like core CMS, right? So here, what 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 kind of feature we need to provide is something. Let's say we want to introduce a sync support for contacts or sync support from companies or any other entities. So we need to provide you know all sort of configurations and all sort of features for this. Like what kind of you know object we want to, um, what kind of object we want to you know sync with third party system or what kind of fields that are needed that we want to sync. Like for example. 
API is returning XYZ fields and uh, we want to sync with those particular vertex fields. We need to provide all sort of all sort of things into uh, configurations. So here, basically, this is again uh, the first step what we got, and uh, the next step is like we have uh, we have uh, two files actually: config support and sync support PHP. Um, just a second. Yeah. So yeah. So we have uh, two files actually: config support.php and sync support.php. So over here, I'll quickly uh, walk you through about these files actually and what what those basically uh, specifies. Um, just a second. Give me a moment. Sorry for the uh, this back and forth. So the thing is that we need to provide uh, two uh, files basically for config support and sync support. So uh, basically this config support and sync support, these two files are basically this is something to tell the integration about like what kind of features we want, what kind of configuration we want. So typically uh, for uh, like various plugins, what we what we do is like we have authentication systems or we want to integrate with like let's say Demio in our case, right? So we need to store the authentication keys. We need to store the API URLs and all these things, right? Apart from these, we need to store even like the field mapping as well, like what kind of fields that we want to, uh, you know, we want to uh, map with the like uh, uh, the coming data. So we need to like store all sort of things uh, with the uh, plugin configuration. So we have uh, we have a you know we have a class and we actually specify over here. So I will quickly show it to you. Yeah. So this is basically um, config support and sync support file. So essentially, uh, config support is file something it, it holds reference to various other classes. For example, um, this method a get auth config form name, which is like uh, again a class of like config auth type class. And uh, this is again a simple uh, symphony form. We specified like all sort of uh, fields that we want to add in the our class, configure it and validate it. Similarly, we have other features like I mean, right now we don't have additional features, so it is empty. But I mean, if you want to uh, specify additional features, we can use it over here. And uh, other features like we want to, you know, provide a feature sync and uh, what kind of objects that we want to sync. So, like for example, uh, this is a demo object, uh, which is something we are uh, holding reference to it and. Uh, it should be mapped with uh, proper uh, proper object in the like uh, motif. So, so this is about uh, uh, demio uh, object mapping. Apart from that, we have a uh, field mapping for uh, you know a repository and all sort of field mapping. So, so the next thing is um, once we have these two files ready, uh, we just need to like take care of and uh, we need to specify all these two files. For example, if you see the auth type class, we have added like, uh, you know, uh, key, uh, um, secret key and the URL and uh, we have various feature which is not needed as of now. So we have kept it empty. Now for the bundle configuration, uh, what we need to do is like, we need to uh, write those two classes like config uh, auth type and config features. So over here, if you see, in the config auth type, we have uh, specified all those classes and uh, all those fields. And uh, yeah, we are calling uh, API method just to validate like whether the fields are fine or not. So this is about uh, providing a general configuration for that. And uh, next one is introducing uh, authentication support actually. So as Pratik mentioned, right, it uh, Motic provides uh, various uh, integration bundle provides various authentication method, like for example, like this uh, uh, simple authentication method, like uh, basic auth, OAuth, and apart from that, there are uh, there are various other methods, like based on like uh, header uh, authentication or uh, 
header key based authentication so so um like is uh, svc right there are like um, various authentication methods so we will be like reviewing uh, all the authentic authentication method uh, one by one actually um we uh, actually the the kind of authentication method that demio uses so uh, i mean integration bundle doesn't provide uh, that thing out of box so what we need to do is like what i have just built a simple uh, another client which uses dozen but uh, i will like uh, give you a few example from the documentation that is present on github so yeah so the first one is like uh, parameter based uh, api key authentication so this is again us like the simple one like what we do many times right many third party system that provides uh, authentication mechanism where you just need to give one key name and the key value and uh, yeah and the authentication happens so this is something uh, <laughs> we need to build a, a new uh, a client class actually and uh, which implements a parameter credentials interface and uh, yeah we can we can use that service to properly take it and uh, this is basically the things related to uh, parameter based api key credentials now moving on to header base uh, so again i mean uh, many um, th third party um, system that provide uh, you know header based authentication where you know we provide some sort of header key and uh, header value so uh, even the integration bundle has a uh, uh, credentials interface to handle that where you know we provide a header key name and header key value so that like it will um, integration bundle will automatically handle authentication and related scaffolding things so this is pretty much uh, about like the straightforward authentication things and uh, yeah uh, as i um, mentioned earlier about the basic it is again same i mean it, it's just a simple uh, straightforward uh, uh, credential class which implements credentials interface and uh, this is a basic uh, basic auth service so we have a couple of methods over here basically which is defined in interface to get username get password and uh, i mean authenticate those so this is uh, about uh, like uh, basic authentication moving on to oauth so by default integration integration bundle provides like authentications using like oauth1 oauth2 when oauth1 is like oauth1 a2 leg similarly oauth2 2 leg 3 leg so the thing is that uh, the the overall the workflow is something like first uh, you know consumer will request uh, uh, request for the uh, access token using like consumer key and consumer secret key once we have like both the data mm. it will actually return the access key and we will send that access key in the subsequent request for um, i mean just to access like authorized uh, resources so this is the kind of the overall uh, you know flow of the OAuth authentication now uh, the thing is that uh, in case of um, like uh, let's say let's see an example related to oauth two leg right so the thing is that uh, in oauth two leg what we have is like um, you know um, uh, first first step is to get a request token so we we send a like post request with the consumer key and consumer secret key fine so once once the server uh, actually returns uh, the response it will have like access token expire set um, the timestamp which is like the duration after which um, the token expires and um, the data so that like once we have that access token and um, expires and all those things we actually get that access token and we send like next request with that access token so that it will actually uh, consider that request as authorized request so <laughs> so overall uh, to build authentication we need to usually specify all the things inside a connection folder and we need to like namespaces accordingly obviously so i'll give you uh, one example over here uh, it is from uh, hello world bundle again it is present on uh, uh, motix github actually so it is using uh, two-legged authentication so this is the, like the credentials class which is uh, implementing uh, client credentials grant interface and it is two leg authentication so um, we just need to like specify authorization url uh, client id and gate id this is something which we uh, get it from configuration and uh, once we have that uh, the uh, motix integration bundles like authentication system it will take care of like uh, handling authentication access token um, and the token grant and handling all those things so we have various services over there which will basically 
handle like for example if you want to um, we have a token vector service and there is one more service related to tokens so uh, it will actually you know it will actually uh, handle and it will like perform um, overall uh, authentication process on behalf of us actually so plugin don't need to like worry about uh, too much uh, about authentication one thing i would like to mention over here is uh, <clears throat> um the simple authentication that i did for uh, the nameo bundle integration plugin so um, by default i mean it's like a simple authentication system i it's just um, you know i i create i created one class client.php and uh, yeah i mean just a simple http call get api url and pass like api key api secret key which is again as per the you know uh, as per the api from demio and uh, that's why we have to do it actually we have to specify everything uh, explicitly otherwise uh, integration bundle uh, typically takes care of it so this is about like authentication again i mean authentication is kind of uh, uh, tricky and as well as um, little uh, you know uh, time consuming thing so yeah um, i i will share the documentation url so you can refer it uh, after that as well so uh, once authentication is done uh, next step is like uh, you know data synchronization <clears throat> so uh, data synchronization is like typical it gets handled in three ways actually first is like we need to define a field mapping like for example um, let's say uh, api is responding so much data what all data we want to import and what all uh, fields should get the data so basically we need to map those uh, motic uh, you know, motic plugins uh, motic fields with like the incoming data so this is like first step once we have that like field mapping ready uh, we have a um, <coughs> Uh, sync service which will build a sync report and the next one is uh, executing sync order so which will uh, like uh, integration bundle it's just one command so we just need to run it with like appropriate argument and it will uh, import the data so the uh, the first thing is about uh, field mapping so field mapping is something like uh, we where we you know we specify like what all fields should get uh, uh, imported or what uh, what all fields should get made with like contact entity of the motic so uh, this is something uh, um, basically we need to specify a various field classes actually for that and uh, we need to define a field mapping as well so i'll quickly uh, walk you through about it so here uh, for field mapping we have like field class field repository mapped field info and various other files are there so i'll quickly explain like the significance of each file so uh, as we see like when we were uh, yeah, we, when we were checking the um the configuration for that like for example uh, the configuration form for over here right so we quickly noticed one thing like get old field for mapping right so it it is basically the field repository so once what what field repository does is typically it gets list of old fields from the api so many times what happens like api uh, doesn't provide all the fields so we can typically store it in JSON somewhere. Like these are the fields that are coming from API, and we want to import it, right? So it will like get all the fields from uh, fields that are like coming from API. And uh, once we have that, actually, we have various methods. Like we want to, let's say, this field is supposed to get uh, um, required field or uh, some other attributes that we want to provide. So we can actually uh, specify it over here. And uh, there is like one more. Uh, a class actually field dot class again i mean this is um, just like getter and setter method uh, for the fields so i can quickly uh, show it in the backend like what it looks like so this is again a motic instance so i'll click on the integrations okay. I think it takes a while yeah so this is about like authentication and all those things this is about uh, the feature setting that what we have uh, so this is where, uh, where basically we specify like we want to sync contact entity or uh, we want to sync uh, um, uh, like what all things that we want to sync and the third one is like the uh, the field mapping that we are discussing right so <laughs> this is basically uh, these are the fields that are coming from uh, api actually the, the thing that is over here and uh, we are mapping like the first name coming from the api it should be mapped with first name uh, from the uh, motic lead actually 
So, and here we need to specify the direction. We can actually control it. So, uh, we can actually specify, we can even control these options actually, uh, because by default, uh, uh, it provides like uh, sync both the ways, sync to integration, sync to motif. So that like, okay. we can again manage it in our configurations. So the uh, thing is that like the immediate step would be to um, have the uh, configurations ready. So, uh, so the uh, thing is that like these all all these things like together it provides uh, a fields related configuration like what all fields we want to you know we want to integrate and all those things and uh, uh, the next thing is like um, uh, mapping factory we will see it in the uh, sync section actually so yeah so the next thing is uh, building sync report. So uh, once we have the like field mapping ready, uh, Motic has a like kind of um, integration uh, integration bundle as kind of uh, you know um, sync support where you know uh, the command provides various options like we want to uh, migrate data between like certain timestamps, certain objects, and it has like various other options which you can see over here. Just a second. Yes. Right. So it has like various options over here. So uh, basically what happens like uh, during uh, uh, sync report is something like, let's say um, I want to import object between like uh, time X and time Y. So we pass those timestamps and if API supports those kind of uh, data, like let's say if API has the flexibility to pass timestamp and fetch it accordingly, we can fetch it and uh, we can process it accordingly. Otherwise like we need to like, uh, manage it accordingly and we we can filter the data accordingly based on the timestamp that uh, api returns so this is about uh, building sync report uh, so once we have that sync report uh, we can actually leverage our api and uh, we can actually um, run the sync so uh, overall the things that are needed for uh, sync report is this this many files actually in the inside sync directory we have our data exchange uh, services so what we need to do is like we need to build a report builder and then uh, sync data exchange services so i will quickly show you like what is the thing with report builder okay. so yeah so again i mean this is the first service that runs like um, so what it what it basically does is like get all the data and uh, process it and uh, so suppose like let's say as i mentioned earlier right i mean um, it, um, I mean, uh, like the API doesn't have a provision to take all sort of configuration options and all those things. <laughs> so I'm taking just a dummy data actually. So I'm taking dummy events and dummy subscriber, or we can say dummy participants, and uh, will like uh, will iterate through all the data, request objects basically. This this is basically it. It works. It, it prepares repaired uh, reports based on like data access objects. So it is like data access object for this uh, dem uh, demo integration. So it will like uh, find uh, all the objects that are supposed to be modified or read, right? And get all the data, process it, and uh, uh, create the object. So the another thing that I would like to uh, mention over here is normalizer. So suppose um, API data is coming in like different way. Let's say uh, instead of like Boolean, it is returning one or zero, or uh, or if you want to tweak it either way, we can use a normalizer class actually uh, that will ultimately uh, normalize the data the way Motic is expecting it. So this is another thing. I mean, we need to um, uh, use it. I mean, when we are building it. So uh, over here, I mean, if you see over here, we are using normalizer. And uh, we get the normalized value, we get the field in the object, and we uh, add the object in the uh, service. So this is basically the job of report builder to build and uh, prepare all the reports and uh, have everything ready. So the next thing is like, uh, once we have everything ready, what we usually do is like, we just run this command and uh, integration framework will take care of it. So yeah. <laughs> So this is the command actually PHP bin console and we need to uh, give like integration name over here so that it will actually uh, you know uh, import all the data relevant to like integrations. So the next thing is like uh, okay now we have imported the data and uh, now okay we have everything ready. Now what we want to do is like we want to filter data 
or we want to filter users like what's their behavior how they you know how they react to uh, you know various uh, events they attend in the left early or how they basically um, uh, interpret those events so the thing is that like once we have the data we can actually uh, build a various uh, filters around it actually so in motic i mean if we uh, if you might have come across when you are on a uh, segment creation page you can uh, specify various filters on the context so uh, next thing is something uh, we are like uh, we are going to build those filters over here so uh, to build a filter uh, we are like leveraging event listener uh, uh, features for the motic or even like any uh, symphony application so um, we have like various events uh, out of this like we are using uh, list filter choice on generate event so that like what happens it will generate uh, relevant options over here um, so this is something um, this is our event listener so what it will do it will generate all the choices next one is uh, we need to map all those choice to particular query builder let's see if i choose, select choice x what should be the query builder for that particular choice <laughs> and the third thing is to implement uh, a query builder so that like once we have that uh, particular choice and we are running a segment rebuild command it should be <laughs> it should be particularly <clears throat> it should it should filter uh, results accordingly so this is the kind of uh, gist of creating filters so i'll, I'll uh, quickly um, show it like what we have right now so uh, first of all uh, we have like choice subscriber fine so we have like uh, various choice like for example uh, session attended session did not attended completed okay and left early right so now we have like four choice over here and um, if you see here in screenshot you you are able to see like yeah we can see like four choices over here now the next step is like once we have those four choices we need to map those with like um, yeah relevant filters so this is something uh, um another subscriber basically segment uh, dictionary on generate event uh, this is something we are using it and uh, here we specify basically their filter so here we have like contact filter query builder so if you see over here right we come to this service over here and uh, once we have that service over here uh, what we usually do is like we uh, prepare the value we concatenate it accordingly this is how we are actually storing the values so and uh, we build the query so that like it actually filters data accordingly we will see it in action like uh, in the demo um, i'll explain you like how things are so so the next one is about like uh, you know uh, having a point actions let's say if user attends certain events or user attends certain webcast it should be it should be assigned with uh, a specific points let's say if user attends test event one uh, and it, it like it, it completes the entire event we should assign 34 points this is the kind of thing that how uh, you know marketing leverage um, the user uh, persona actually <laughs> so um, yeah so we want to uh, build that thing as well uh, so that again i mean the event subscriber is something that um, that really helps so uh, some uh, this time we are like um, leveraging uh, points on build event actually so first uh, we will build a form uh, that will basically provide all sort of options once we have that form uh, we will have like another subscriber that will um that will actually um, uh, process it and uh, it will uh, return the appropriate data and another one is like object processor that i would like to iterate it over here because the way we are storing data is something um, uh, something unique because we need to um, store up like what all user is uh, attending what all events so this is something uh, object processor uh, that we need to write it actually so uh, i'll quickly show you so the first one is uh, event subscriber the second one is i'll close other files just a second yeah so first one is event subscriber the second one is uh, uh, form fine so so the form is like uh, first of all uh, if we see the uh, form over here right so uh, when the contact uh, blah, blah blah webcast and then first 
first form is something the list of events actually so here i added a list of events like i am fetching the list from the dummy api and the second form is about like whether it has like completed an activity or not so this is the kind of uh, uh, setup which provides it the next one is uh, subscriber so what basically what is the thing that helps us to render these forms on the uh, um, forms on the interface and what basically what is the thing that is triggering uh, callback um, actions so this is where we uh, you know we want to um, um, map actually form type uh, with the um, form generation method so this is basically uh, it will actually call this form and it will render the form and uh, another thing that i would like to mention here is um, how can actually we uh, leverage it so this is um, a sync object processor class what are we doing is like we are uh, calling this method and uh, ultimately what we are doing here is we are just triggering this method fine so once we trigger it it will it will get called and it will have all sort of data and it will assign a um, um, appropriate point so this is the kind of thing how we have um, used it like we have um, tightly coupled with like uh, you know a event uh, uh, subscriber which are responsible for generating the form and the object processor from where we actually uh, send the request and the process the data so uh, yeah so this is about the point system and uh, I'll, I'll do a quick demo uh, so i'll show you yeah so first of all we have uh, um, uh, two segments over here Let me, yeah so uh, it doesn't have any context as of now this is the segment for uh, you know uh, people who have left early uh, another one is i would like to mention a point section which what we have over here so we are assigning certain points like eight points on action and if we see over here and right, we actually uh, edit it okay if someone attends test event and activity is completed um, we will assign 34 points now i would like to uh, display the dummy data that uh, we are using over here okay fine so this is like uh, no event data and uh, this is like subscriber data the format of subscriber data is something uh, email name uh, whether it has completed or not i mean it did not attend it, um, the last name the website and uh, basically the event id Right. So event ID is one to four. Here we can see the event is one to three for is test event. Now I uh, will try to run it. Okay. So what uh, what typically happens in the background? It will review all the things. It will uh, create all sort of contacts and everything. And uh, uh, I'll show you over here. Yeah how basically all this data are being stored right so we have like all uh, these are like all the contact id uh, 14 15 16 17 18 and uh, uh, this is what we have like uh, for example contact id uh, is has attended event 1 2 3 4 and it has complete uh, he has completed it fine similarly this is the kind of mapping that we are storing over here so i can show you like where are we doing it so we have a like object creator class so on um, like we have another event uh, from integrations bundle so once hap uh, once like thing is the, like once uh, uh, sync happens actually we store the relations over here and uh, this is how we actually uh, uh, store it so that like we can um, identify the user. so i'll quickly switch over here fine and we have all sort of users and related data over here and i will actually run the segment class uh, just a second yeah segment uh, segment update so what happens like uh, uh, users will get assigned proper segment so now if you see right we had that um, conditions on the point right like if user is attending and completing whole event it will get assigned uh, 34 uh, points so user one has like 34 points you can see it in the data over here right so user one has like completed event one and uh, yeah it has been assigned uh, uh, 34 points so similarly uh, in the segments as well if you see here we have one contact 
of who is like left early stage so i'll show you like how things are so i'll try to edit this uh, segment and i'll show you the conditions okay. so uh, if we see go to the filter like um, so we have a filter like left early and the test event too so it will like list out all the folks who have like uh, uh, left test event too earlier okay so here if we can see okay and um, yeah so user 3 is someone who is like uh, early so if we see here we can actually see the uh, all the relevant data in the segments so this is how basically it has segment filters and the overall uh, point system works and how we can actually leverage integration integration bundles to um, implement um, all sort of things the next one is like a uh, this is the repository that I have built, like uh, in the um, the code example that I was doing, uh, and uh, I was doing while uh, showing in the session. Uh, this is another like example, uh, Hello World uh, plugin bundle, which is something we have extensively used it to learn. Uh, it is like another repository for the authorization and code grant, and uh, we have a wiki over here. So yeah, I mean you can read uh, it, you can know more about it. So yeah, any uh, questions? And I'll quickly open it. Yeah, I know we were kind of a little yeah. bit over the time, but yeah, uh, if, you were, if you have any questions uh, and if you have time to take it up. Uh, mm -hmm. um, Patrick, uh, for the session, and uh, we have a few questions, so I'll just quickly share my screen and I'll put up sure. questions on the screen. Right. Okay, so just give me a few seconds. Huh? Um, yeah, so uh, for the first one, like how will you uh, seeing other fields apart from the contact fields, right? So, I mean, is it like really about uh, syncing the fields for a different entity or something? Uh, because uh, typically, uh, like the way we create field in the entity, like for example, we can create a new fields in the Motic uh, from the admin interface. And uh, those fields will appear on the like uh, sync widget, and we can actually uh, map it with like the fields that are coming from the integrations. So this is one thing. I mean, um, uh, and uh, if you want to have like another uh, entity all together, like let's say company, then um, we need to tweak uh, integration implementation accordingly so that it, it supports like both the entities, like contacts and companies. So this is one thing, and. Uh, yeah, and uh, how's the mapping of the users and events stored in the database? So uh, as I displayed, right? I mean, like we have, uh, we are overriding, um, we are actually using uh, um, uh, uh, an event actually, which is like given by integrations bundle. So um, we basically, what we do is like, uh, we subscribe to that event and we uh, build relations in the sync relations method. So uh, I can quickly share my screen. Mm, yeah, I'll share it. Yeah. So here, what we are doing is like uh, we are subscribing this method, uh, integration event, integration with sync. And so once it is done, uh, we actually call this method, and uh, here where we are actually uh, storing the relation. So uh, I mean, as I uh, this, as I like explained the database table, right? The way we are storing relationships. So this is where actually, uh, yeah, we um, uh, we handle it actually. All right. Uh, thanks a lot for answering these questions, and also thanks for the session. It was very informative. I really enjoyed the session, and um, thanks, Patrick. Thanks, Mohit, and I'm sure the yeah, audience who joined the session enjoyed the session. Thanks a lot. See you yeah. in the audience. Thank audit. you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Everyone.